fuel cell car powered by hydrogen made with electricity uses three to four times more energy than a car powered by batteries. This is the beginning of some fantastic technology, and uh, thanks for having us out here. We're going to look at some other vehicles here in a minute, but uh, you know, hydrogen is the wave of the future. Today, there's a lot of enthusiasm for hydrogen cars, but you know, I wrote a whole book, The Hype About Hydrogen. I think it's pretty clear that hydrogen is a much tougher alternative fuel than any other alternative fuel we've ever pursued. So these are the five miracles that you need successful hydrogen car in the marketplace. First, your average hydrogen car costs a million dollars. That's got to drop. Second, uh, no known material to humankind can store enough hydrogen on board the car to give you the range people want. Miracle number three is the fuel is wildly expensive. Even hydrogen from dirty fossil fuels is two or three times more expensive than gasoline. Fourth, you have to have the fueling infrastructure. You know, we have 180,000 gas stations. Someone's going to have to build at least 10 or 20,000 hydrogen fueling stations before anybody is going to be very interested. And miracle five is you have to hope and pray that the competitors in the marketplace uh, don't get any better. Because right now, uh, the best car in the marketplace just got a lot better, the hybrid vehicle. Still runs on gasoline. You can fuel it everywhere. It has twice the range of a regular car. Current hybrid vehicles depend on gasoline, but use an electric motor to increase their fuel economy. And if battery technology keeps getting steadily better, then the best hybrid and then plug-in hybrid in the year 2020 will be vastly superior to the best uh, hydrogen car. You guys have filmed me long enough to know that, you know, I like hearing myself talk, number one. And number two, that I'm not going to dance around the issue. And, and, and these could be a long ways out into the future. Toyota says fuel cell cars 30 years away. OK, then I get the calls from the DOE and the state of California and what in the hell are you doing and all the other fuel cell manufacturers. You know, we're trying to make a living here and you say this and uh, it's awful. Just because a lot of people want it to work, it's no guarantee. That's Disneyland, you know, wishing makes it come true. So I'm, I don't work in Disneyland. I, <laughs> I work in the real world where wishing doesn't make it come true, and you've really got to work hard to make it come true. Hopefully we do. On the 27th day of their vigil, activists finally heard from GM. Paul Scott calls. Are you guys busy? They're, they're, they're calling in the cars right now. Uh, GM is loading the cars on trucks right now. We're like, what, what? Well, yeah, we'll drop everything and run on down there right now. GM, media blast just went, is going out. Okay. Both are closed. They loaded them up. You know, tires screeching and panels cracking against each other as they shoved them onto the trucks. We're up against most of the money in the world. We're up against the oil industry, the automobile industry. It's David versus Goliath in a very big way. But if there are enough Davids in the world, we can win. Forever. Maybe just to the grass there, if you just get out of the driveway for us, so we don't have to put hands on anybody. Okay. Thank you. On March 15, 2005, 
the last EV-1s in the Burbank lot were taken away and destroyed. All right, well, come on in. Cool. We'll go down to the vault and I'll show you the car. Yay. Yeah. I miss this little car. Yeah, yeah, we love having it. We have a number of electric vehicles in the collection and hybrids, but we're especially happy about this. And this is a special one. There she is. My baby. Number 99. <laughs> You might recognize this car. I do. It was Chris's car. Sure was. Please, have a seat. There's only one challenge. It doesn't start up. <laughs> well, you know that um, General Motors disabled them. I know. We wish they didn't, but they had to. So we understand that. We're just happy to have it. Yeah. That is such an important part of automotive history. It is. To have a so manufacturer like General Motors participate right. in this program. It's wonderful. The thing is, it shouldn't be a part of automotive history. Ever since 1939, they would dangle this electric car. They have a few models out there. They'd say there's something in another few years. And it never came because they never intended it to come. They make too much money with their technological stagnation and the internal combustion engine. As something becomes scarce, then there's economic pressures to find alternatives. And as long as no alternatives exist, the scarce item can become increasingly profitable. These are the same batteries that are used in your laptop computer, and we have 6,800 cells. And it can go 300 miles on one charge, running about 70 miles an hour. It's now at 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. So it's really amazing performance for any car, not just an electric car. Those same batteries could be put in EV1 and make it a 300-mile range car very easily. Really? So it's such a shame seeing these cars destroyed when you can upgrade them. I know what I did and why I did it. And if I had to do the same thing again based on the data, and I've seen what's happened to date, I would do exactly the same thing. For most Americans, when you talk about sensible energy policy, what most people hear is, you're gonna make me drive a small car, you're gonna make me keep my house cold, and essentially you're gonna make me live like a European. It's a lack of leadership. It's a lack of being able to take on the oil industry and the automobile industry and recognize that they are not Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam has to be Uncle Sam. And Uncle Sam is acting like they're General Motors. They're squandering huge amounts of money on hydrogen cars, which by any reasonable estimate are not going to be selling in the consumer market for two decades at the earliest. And I think it will go down as one of the biggest blunders in the history of the automotive industry. I mean, you've never heard that expression, death by a million cuts, little tiny cuts, eventually someone will bleed to death. The fight over electric cars was quite simply a fight about the future. Goliath won this round, 
But now Goliath has new problems. Oil prices have soared. America is further entangled in the Middle East. And global warming is an increasingly serious threat. What can we do to reshape the future? This city is replete with famous names that are no longer here. Why? Because they didn't, couldn't adapt to change. We all have to adapt to change. Don't debate about who's to blame or what to blame. Let's build new industries. Let's make America strong again. Chelsea continues her work with a new group called Plug In America, working with citizens across the political spectrum to promote an independent energy future. You know, I met Jim Woolsey at an event, and as it turns out, he was already a bit of a fan of stuff that we were doing, and he's come to work with Plug In America. And that's one example of the types of relationships that have to exist in order to further what we all want. I've uh, served in uh, four uh, administrations and with presidential appointments, all in different aspects of national security. And the fact that two-thirds of the world's proven reserves of oil are in the Middle East and we're so dependent on that part of the world is a very big national security question. Well, behind me, there are two things. One is a Prius, hybrid gasoline electric uh, Toyota, and an electrical uh, substation. Today, they don't have much to do with one another, but there's a chance that they might be able to have something to do with one another in a positive way. And that's where I think the plug-in hybrid is the natural next step and that is available to us today. This is a plug-in hybrid Prius, which is a modification to a normal Toyota Prius that allows you to travel, which gives you up to 150, 180 miles per gallon for the first 50 to 60 miles of the day. We don't need an expensive charging infrastructure to use this car. You can just plug it in anywhere in your garage. So we make the environmentalists happy because it's cleaner. We make the uh, neoconservatives happy because it uses less gasoline. Well, everyone's happy because it uses less gasoline. Plugging in could go a long way to reducing our dependence on oil. And generating that electricity with the wind and the sun would create even less pollution. With his battery technology in most hybrid cars, Ovchinsky has also built one of the largest thin film solar factories in the world. This is just an ordinary steel roof. And this is with the adhesive. You just put the shingles down, nail them down. You're in there, you run your wires down. Everything is plug and play. Anybody that wants to make a revolution shouldn't grab a gun. Just go and start working like we do to change the world by using science and technology. I am so optimistic about the future. I mean, even given everything that we've seen and all of the EV wars, I remain an optimist. One of the things that makes America work is this rampant grassroots agitation for things that are new. When you get a coalition of that size and that surprising character, you get politicians' attention. And here we have a serious problem. America is addicted to oil. I call all this a potential coalition between the tree huggers, the do-gooders, the sodbusters, the cheap hawks, and the evangelicals. That's a pretty good size coalition. We are about to enter into a world that's truly renewable and completely clean if we just had the willpower to implement it. Well, you don't have to wait for major auto companies to do it. You can do it yourself like what I'm doing here. Old cars, new cars, doesn't really matter. I can convert anything. You haven't seen anything yet. The future is going to be very bright in this area. And the forces are all pushing in that direction, both the economic and technological forces. So, you know, once people see these things, they say, wow, I want to do this. And so the word is getting out. That gives us hope, hope that we can end up our lives having achieved what we set out to do, and we have. And you still have so many more years you want to do things. I wouldn't have enough time. I've, I am shooting with hot dice right now. So. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Maybe sunshine and maybe rain.